morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Kino Campus. Today, uh, we for, for, for the, the first lecture by Professor Nakashikan in the University of Tokyo. And uh, uh, for first part, the, the art will be compiled in the file, so please be part of that. So, please. <laughs> OK. So, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So welcome to Japan and welcome to this uh, CLTT. Uh, this is the second time we hold the uh, CLTT. And it, so uh, you know the Kansas? You know? Maybe the Kansas has been uh, currently recognized as a very good education too for the uh, satellite development all over the world. So maybe you know uh, something about the Kansas. And the, uh, at the first lecture of the CLTT, I'd like to briefly uh, introduced uh, cancer. What is cancer? What cancer means? And how the cancer start? And the, what cancer contribute to the uh, development training? Okay? And so uh, I will uh, do a, a two lectures in the morning. The first is the introduction to the cancer. And the second is the more, a little more detail about the cancer systems and also the mission. And maybe uh, from my lectures, you can get some hint about how to create the uh, cancer missions. And okay, and how to start a cancer people. Okay, and the, uh, from the third lecture of the CRP, you will uh, have a more a detailed information of each subsystem. Okay, so uh, let me briefly uh, start uh, the cancer introduction. Okay, uh, we, we have the textbook in the files. Okay, so uh, please refer, also refer to and uh, in the first lecture uh, today, I'd like to uh, give you some information about the what is that? What cancer is? And first of all, concept and history and the variety of cancer. And then I'd like to uh, show you the significance of cancer-based training, uh, especially what you can learn in cancer and the uh, special features suitable for education. And then I'd like to give you uh, the cancer systems and operations basic system the operation of the cancer very, very briefly. And finally, I'd like to uh, show you how to create the cancer missions. This is a very important part. And the example missions and tips for cancer creation, uh, mission creation. And finally, I'd like to briefly overview as a, a hand, hands-on uh, micro nano people satellite development activities in Japan, which follow the cancer activity. Okay? The first, what a cancer is, what is cancer? Uh, this is the very first of the cancer. In November two, uh, 1998, uh, the University, uh, University Space Systems Symposium, which has been held between the United States and the Japan universities, and which was held in Hawaii. Professor Bob Twist, he is a, a professor at Stanford University, uh, he proposed the cancer concept. And he, uh, this is a 350 milliliter can-sized small satellite for the vision of purpose, which is launched into high altitude by rockets, balloons, and or model aircraft. And the experiments are performed during descent by parachute, simulating the satellite operation in space. So, the important thing is that the uh, can will be launched into uh, some altitude, and uh, during the descent with a parachute, maybe it takes about a uh, sometimes it takes about 2 20 seconds and sometimes it takes about 15 minutes or so. And it, it simulates the satellite operation in space. For example, if the satellite comes over uh, your ground station, it takes about, about 15 minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes. And during that time, you can operate the satellite using the ground station. And CANSAT is very similar uh, to that situation. The CANSAT is down, uh, going down. And during that time, you can operate the Cancer using your ground station. So this is a very good training for the satellite development and also the satellite operation. So this is a basic concept of cancer. And initially, uh, the Professor Twist proposed to launch your cancer into the space. This is a, a very beginning concept of the cancer. So maybe uh, 10 or uh, 15 cancers will be launched all together with some connected. And uh, after uh, the launch, uh, we operate. Many universities will operate collaboratively uh, this cancer. And uh, maybe the cancer will be uh, the orbit and uh, going into the atmosphere and run out. And so, so that it, can, it will not be a debris. 
H, and so this is the initial aim of cancer. But, and we searched for the cancer to, uh, launch opportunity, but it was very difficult at that time to uh, find uh, such kind of opportunity. So, uh, we switched to the suborbital experiment. And while I was staying at the Stanford University in 1999, uh, we, uh, Professor Twix and I, searched for some uh, rocket group who helped us pro uh, launch our uh, cancer. And we found a very good uh, rocket group named the Okay, And they have a very good, lo uh, very good rocket right This is a, uh, a solid rocket motor, solid, solid uh, rocket, and the motor rockets. It, it, it sometimes called the model body. And it, uh, it, it can lift our cancer down to the altitude of the 4 kilometer. And the total payload weight is 1.8 kilograms. It includes almost three cancers over here. And it, uh, it costs about uh, 400 US dollars per flight. It's very, very cheap. And it was held in the Bradlock Desert uh, in Never uh, State. And so, uh, in this way, uh, the United States and Japan started the a joint uh, experimental event, uh, which is called the ALIS, a rocket launch for international student satellite, a near suborbital launch experiment, which was started in 1999. Okay? And the, uh, the initially, uh, two universities from Japan and two uh, universities from the United States participated in this event. But as you see, that more and more university has been participating in this event. And the last year, we have, um, I, I think, uh, 14 universities from Japan and two from USA and one from Korea, and even the high school student in the, uh, Japan participated in this. And every year, I think uh, more than 100 students from Japan are going abroad, going to the United States to test their cancer in the desert. And this year also, we will have the uh, maybe 14th, maybe 14th hours in the, uh, September, uh, 10th to 14th. And also, we started a balloon experiment in Japan. So it's very difficult to have a launch experiment in Japan because of the safety reasons. So uh, we uh, replaced the rocket with balloon. And the balloon experiment started in 19, uh, 2002. And initially, we used the summer balloon. You know the summer balloon? Very big balloon. And uh, some, uh, maybe four or five people can ride this balloon. And the, at the altitude of 500 meters, we throw the cancer away. And so it can go down uh, to the ground. So this kind of the thermal balloon experiment started in 2000. And then uh, we started the, uh, this kind of the tethered balloon experiment in 2005 in the Noshiro. And it, uh, also the IAC, International Astronomical Congress, which was held in Kuoka in 2006, we did uh, first international competition in Japan. Okay, like many uh, physical uh, students are participating and they made one cancer, a simple cancer, and they tested uh, using this kind of the value system. <laughs> and uh, maybe uh, in this uh, CLTP, uh, you will make a final uh, field test in the Noshiro event. And the Noshiro event held, has been held annually in 2006, and as you see that the many, this kind of rocketeer, uh, Japanese uh, students who are participating in this rocket development are uh, coming and they, they will provide their uh, rocket. And maybe you will put your cancer in one of these rockets and it will launch maybe up to the altitude of the four or five hundred meters. And during this time you can uh, experiment your cancer. Okay? And so this is this kind of also we will use this kind of the balloon test. And so this uh, Noshiro event will uh, combine the balloon uh, cancer experiment and the rocket cancer experiment, also the uh, rocket itself experiment. So many, many people, many, many Japanese students will join. And so please, you can say, have an exchange, a uh, research or a uh, personal exchange with such kind of the Japanese students. There are several types of the cancer, maybe, as you know. And the uh, usual cancer, the initial concept of the cancer is, uh, of course, the 350 milliliter, very small cancer. Uh, can size something like this, okay? But in addition to that, in Alice experiment, which has been held annually in the United States, uh, another type of the cancer, which is called open grass, open grass has appeared. So this is a bigger cancer, okay? And the uh, usual, uh, just uh, small cancer, uh, three cancer uh, can be launched by one Alice rocket, but in this uh, large cancer, open grass cancer, one cancer can be launched by the Alice. So it, it, it almost has a three times 
as large as this cap, kind of small cap. So this is a feedback. And maybe in this CRTP, then you will develop small, small, small. Uh, maybe you will develop this small size cap. Okay, so uh, now uh, let me quickly uh, show you the significance of the cancer face break. Okay, so uh, it goes without saying that uh, this kind of the micro nano people satellite development has been a lot of uh, significance, uh, meaning uh, for the education. First, important thing is that uh, in the space, space, uh, say, a project has a very, very long period of time. First, you will conceptualize the missions make a satellite design, publication, ground test, and refurbish uh, the refinement, and modification, and launch, and operation. So there are many, many say, type of the action, uh, activity that should be performed before actually getting the uh, satellite into the launch. So uh, it, it usually takes a very, very long time, such, such kind of five or six or seven years uh, to uh, experience all of this uh, event. But, in the uh, micro nano pico satellite, you can experience this kind of this, all the type of the, uh, space project within a very short time. For the CubeSat case, it requires about two or three years. And the CanSat case, you can obtain this experience, for example, for four or five months. And in this year TV, you can get uh, some brief introduction of this kind of activity within maybe three or four weeks. So, uh, this kind of the maybe condensation of this all the one side of the space project is one very important uh, significance of the micro nano satellite. And during these steps, you can know what is important and what is not. This is very important. And also, it can give you a very very good uh, training for uh, as important for the engineering education. And the engineering education, it is very important to get feedback from the real world to evaluate design, test, and so on. This is very important, okay? And finally, it is a very, very good educational uh, pro, uh, material for the project management. You know, the project management is very important to operate a very large, a large uh, volume of the people. And uh, this is very good training for the project management. Teamwork, conflict resolution, discussion, documentation, these are the very important elements of the project management. And also, uh, for the artists, the students should uh, contact with the American people and they negotiate the launch interface and so on. So it is very good international cooperation, negotiation, and mutual understanding. Okay. So this kind of the cancer to what micro nano satellite will provide this kind of the very good uh, training material. And there are four important, four important elements which should be managed in the project management. So you know what? Maybe so you have the answer in this uh, uh, with the textbook. There are four very important, okay. You know, the four important there. Maybe so you know that. So time, human resource, cost, and risk. So please remember that these four uh, elements are very important uh, elements for uh, project management. Of course, the time is important because the uh, schedule is fixed, the final launch date is fixed. You should finish all the development before. Otherwise, there are zero point. Okay? Otherwise, zero point. So, you should finish it. So, this is very important. And human resource uh, allocation or assignment is very important. And also, the cost, maybe uh, for the cancer development, uh, I every time uh, I say, ask the student to develop your cancer before below a certain amount of money. So this is the cost management, so very important. And finally, the risk management is also very important. Okay? So you will be a very, very good cancer, but just the day before the launch, you drop and uh, um, damage. So it's zero point, also the zero point. So in order to solve this problem, how to how do it? Maybe you, it's better to make a second one, okay. or backup. So this is called a risk management, okay? Please, please think about it. This is very, very important, okay? So that kind of the time, human, cost, and risk management, very important management task for the project management. So, uh, 
this kind of the micro nano satellite, uh, we say, uh, development is also contribute to other technological areas other than the uh, space field. Okay, so you can use this kind of the expertise and skills to many, many people. So this is why the space development is very important. Okay, and the uh, cancer has very, very special features, especially in this kind of the micro nano satellite. These are uh, some of them. So it requires very short time period for one whole uh, project. Uh, for example, uh, in our university, we uh, we say uh, using the five or six months for the mission for the terrestrial satellite design and so on. And but in the CLT, you use maybe three three weeks or four weeks to build all the time. So it's very very short. And the launch date in future case, no delays are. So this is also very important. Because uh, it gives a uh, very pressure to the student for the uh, schedule management. And very low size life cycle cost for one project. For example, 200 bucks to the 1,000 US dollar budget for one thing. Typically, this is what we are doing for our students. And helium value test requires only the 150 uh, per one time, and rocket launch requires only the 400. Uh, uh, so, this is very, very low cost and no need for actual launch into space. So actually launching into the space requires a lot of procedures, okay, a lot of cost and a lot of procedures. It requires maybe two or three years. Okay, so, uh, but uh, if you are uh, using this kind of cancer, there is no need for the actual launch into space. This is how it's very Small, but still can be a satellite, okay? Cancer is very small, but you can implement all the bus function of the satellite into this very small area. So you can learn how to develop the satellite. So this is also very important. Okay? And also, in addition to this bus function, you should implement some missions. Okay? And the, this cancer is very small, but you can use it. And cancer can be retrieved after experiment. So this is very different from the actual satellite. Okay? For example, the satellite stopped sending some signal to the ground, and we don't know what happened in space. But in the cancer experiment, you can retrieve the cancer after the experiment. And if the cancer goes wrong, you can check what did what, what was wrong. So this is very important. Then you can analyze the cause of the failure and uh, regret that to the next design, next cancer develop. So you can do this. So this kind of the uh, recruitment is very important. And finally, it has some possibility of sponsorship from Juice or Four Hunter. And it really works in 2000, okay, in, in, in our second cancer experiment. Okay, some uh, cola company which produce a very red cola, okay, not a blue cola, red cola, okay, uh, gave us a lot of money for the student travel to the United States. Okay, so this kind of thing uh, sometimes happens. And re recently, also the United States country, it's a Japanese, uh, they say, uh, can, uh, maybe they produce some tea, uh, tea or cola or some uh, juice. Uh, they produce a very, very good, uh, they, they, they uh, support it as a very good money. Okay? So this kind of the, uh, sponsorship also happens uh, if you are doing this kind of thing. Okay, so anyway, uh, there are many flavors. Okay, there are many flavors. So this is the uh, failed cancer. So you can guess what happened. Okay. Maybe uh, you have the answer in your uh, slide, uh, in your textbook. Okay, so this is something like that. Parachute part and body part separate. Because when the parachute opens, there are big shock between the parachute part and the body part, you know? So for example, for the early stage, that, that cancer will be deployed from the rocket with a very high speed. And then the, suddenly the parachute open. Okay? So this is going very fast speed. Suddenly the parachute open. And at this time there are big shock between the parachute part and the body part. And the, uh, in this case, in this uh, picture, uh, this uh, parachute part and the body part are separated. What was wrong? What was wrong? So there are two, two how say, failures occurs uh, during the development. So first one is that uh, the student uh, missed the calculation of the shock, okay, shock of the parachute open. So this was the first, first mistake. And the second mistake, uh, they, he make a, uh, how say, 
uh, he made a very, very simple mechanism to uh, connect this parachute button and body part using the screw. Okay. And it, this is aluminum can. And it, aluminum can with a screw is very, very weak. And so it was separated. They made a two mistake. Okay. And it, uh, this, uh, this student who was went in, this student went into the space field. And uh, there, in the space field, he is now, uh, sorry, he is now developing the structure system. And, but uh, maybe he never failed this kind of thing. He never made a mistake in this kind of thing. Because uh, he had a very, very bad failures in this cancer experiment. Okay? And this way, the failure should be experienced many times and fully analyzed. Why project size is small? This is very good. Why project size is small? Okay? For example, he went into the space field and he was one member of the developing uh, maybe 5 million US dollars satellite. And he mistake, he, he made a mistake. And his satellite failed. But okay, uh, I I got a very good training, very good lessons from this way. Is it okay? No, maybe not. Maybe not. But uh, this cancer this satellite project is very small. So you should make this kind of the failure experience during the satellite project very small. Then you can get a feeling how you can avoid this kind of the failure. And then going into the actual satellite world. This kind of thing is very, very important. Okay? And so uh, I do not encourage the student to make a failure. So you should you should avoid failure as much as possible. But if you fail, please analyze the cause of the failure and reflect that to the next design or next development. So that is a very, very important lesson. Okay? So now uh, we are going into a more uh, the systematic things and system missions. Okay. Uh, in Japan, as I say, uh, we already have a certain uh, certain type of rallies and so many types of the cancer have been developed in many universities. And it, each university has their own strengths or own interest of the research. And so uh, they are developing their uh, best system in the campus, and they also make their own type of the mission. Mission is a kind of the experiment, experiment in the campus. For example, okay, so this is a very, very uh, satellite type of campus. So this is the first cancer developed in our university in 1999. Maybe you can see that there is this is uh, solar cells and the generated power in the solar cells is put uh, stored into this uh, 700 battery and so on. So this is very, very satellite type of the cancer. And the, this cancer has the cameras. And the, from the ground, you can control the direction of the camera. And so you can take a picture of the many different areas. Okay? And this camera, uh, this cancer also has a camera at the bottom of this uh, cancer. And you take a moving picture, videos. Uh, from uh, uh, during the descent and so on. So there are many types of the cancer that have been developed. I, I will show you uh, some examples right now. These are the very simple, uh, you say, uh, overview of the spacecraft system. So what is the bus system of the satellite? What is required for the bus system of the satellite? First, uh, you require the command and data handling system. This is very, very a traditional naming, but it, it is a kind of computer. Computer and information network inside of the satellite. So you need an onboard computer and some memory. Uh, these are the elements of the Hashian system. And you need some sensors. Sensors is okay, say sensing something inside of the cancer, also the outside of the cancer. Uh, for example, the voltage, temperature, and the attitude sensor. These are the uh, inside sensors. And in addition to that, you need to, for example, uh, measure the temperature outside or, uh, with example, the atmospheric pressure of the outside and so on. So you can put many, many types of sensors. And also you need actuator. Actuator is something which can move something. For example, uh, thrusters, torquers, motors. Okay, these are the elements of the actuator. And the uh, communication system, because the uh, satellite will launch into the space and the cancer is launched in, into the high altitude. So the cancer do something, but you cannot get any information if the cancer sends that information to the ground. 
So uh, we need a communication system. There are two ways. One is landing. The some information is coming from the satellite to the ground. This is called the landing. And the uplink, you can send some command to the satellite so that the okay, satellite do a certain thing. So this is uh, called uplink. Okay. So there are uplink and downlink systems. And this uh, say command is going to the OBC and do uh, order uh, some some system some, some system to do something. Okay. And also the uh, this data is coming from the OBC. Okay. And going down to the ground. So this kind of the information uh, flow should be designed in the cancer, even in the cancer. And the, uh, as the infrastructure, uh, the satellite requires some thermal control system, and also some uh, ground station and the structure and mechanical system. And uh, this is a power system. In the satellite, uh, as a power system, you need the solar cell and battery, and some charging or recharging uh, electronic system. These are the elements of the power system. So these are called the bus system of the satellite. And in addition to that, you need a mission subsystem. Mission is something which can do actual tasks of the satellite. For the, for the communication satellite, what is a mission subsystem? What is a mission subsystem? Communication, yes, yes. Communication, okay, antenna. Something like antenna and the uh, transponder, and something like that in the uh, mission subsystem. For the remote sensing satellite, taking a picture of the Earth, what is mission subsystem? Mm -hmm. Camera, yes, camera, and also the onboard memory to, how can I say, uh, store the large amount of the uh, image. Okay, and also the downlink system is one type of to send the, the image to the ground. So that should also be one of the mission sources. So in this way, so this the other part of the uh, with the satellite subsystem is called the bus system. Okay? And this is the mission system. So the satellite is consisting of bus system and mission systems. Okay? And the bus system consisting of many types of different C and D system and the communication system and the structure mechanical system and some of the systems and at it sometimes it's called attitude control system. So some sensors and actuators are uh, included in this attitude control system. Okay. And the power system. So these are the elements of the uh, bus system. And the, I'd like to show some okay, say, image of the how the cancer is operating. So first in, in, this is Alice case. United States a uh, desert is very experiment. Okay, maybe uh, this kind of the, how can I say, uh, cylindrical uh, hole, uh, cylindrical, uh, how can I say, uh, envelope is provided by the locker. And the students have put their cancer into this kind of the locker. And they are now holding the parachute. And the finally, it is like this. So the parachute is put on the top of this cancer. And three cancer is loaded into this uh, cylindrical uh, Structure. And this cylinder is put into the nose cone part, nose part of the rocket, and the, finally this nose cone is put into this one. Okay. And this is a larger uh, rocket which, uh, which accommodates three cancers, but maybe not sure of it, it is one cancer? Three model rocket. Three model rocket. Three types. Three, three, type. three rocket. There are many types of the rocket we use in there, I can say, not sure of that. And in this Alice case, this is very large uh, cancer, uh, large uh, locket, and it can accommodate three cancers together. And the, then, uh, so this rocket is put on the launcher, and finally, it will be launched like this. Okay, so, and it goes uh, into the altitude of the four kilometer, and then at this altitude, the three cancers will be deployed. And first, it goes down with some ballistic uh, trajectory and then open the parachute, okay? And then going down to the ground for about maybe uh, 10 to 15 minutes. And during that time, you, you can do a lot of experience. Experience, just like using the satellite. Okay, so like this, and the, okay, and the, so this is, this is a cylinder, okay? 
and from this cylinder, which is called the carrier, and the three cancers will be deployed. And the, uh, during the descent, you can run a lot of experiments. And the, uh, before using this kind of the rocket, so we are doing some pretest using this kind of the uh, helium uh, balloon, okay, helium balloon. And the, uh, there is a cancer gondola uh, accommodated. The cancer is accommodated here. And the, uh, maybe you have this kind of the Arabs uh, radio uh, controller. It's called probe in Japanese. And the, this uh, probe will send uh, some signal uh, to the bottom of this cancer gondola. And the bottom will drop. And then uh, the cancer will be dropped from this. Uh, gondola and it takes about maybe 20 to 30 seconds depending on the height of the uh, balloon and maybe uh, 100 to 200 meters then it will take about maybe 20 to 30 seconds and during that time we, we can travel the experiments. Maybe you will do this kind of the helium balloon experiment, experiment in this area, right? In, in this metropolitan university. Okay, then before going to the machine. Okay, so this is a practice. You can get uh, sequence tests or some pretest using this kind of parameters. And finally, uh, you can uh, test your, uh, your cancer using the uh, rocket. Okay. And the, uh, so maybe uh, it is very important that you will you, you should use the two two theta because of the redundancy. Okay. It, 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 it will be catastrophic if this theta will be broken. So it goes. So this heavy body. So you, you should avoid that kind of thing. Okay, so this shows some a very important picture. Uh, at the time when the, when the student is, is pointing his uh, yagi antenna uh, to the direction where the cancer is released from the rocket. And in the Alice, there is a rule that the, the cancer should not emit any other signal while it is in the rocket, because uh, the rocket should send some signal to the ground. And just after the release from the rocket, uh, the cancer can uh, be uh, can send uh, the signal to the ground. And the, the student is pointing their uh, say, uh, yagi antenna to that direction. So why this is very important? Because as a, at this time, whether the cancer fails or succeed is decided. Okay. At this moment, just at this moment, the whether the cancer succeeds or fails is decided. At this time, if the, if the student can get a signal from the cancer, and this signal has a very good data, it succeeds. But otherwise, it fails. And the important thing is that you cannot do anything at that time, okay? Because the cancer is already lost, and you cannot contact with the cancer anymore. So this is a very special thing for the space system, okay? Rocket or satellite will be released after we will be launched into the space. Then you cannot contact to the uh, rocket or the cancer or a satellite. So this is a very special thing for the cancer. So this is okay. Please, please have that kind, have that kind of thing in mind. I, I will, I will uh, show you more details later. Okay. And it, uh, you also will develop this kind of the ground station. So in this uh, they will do something like that. Okay. And the, uh, maybe on the ground you will you should develop very, very large uh, parabola antenna for the satellite operation. But uh, for the cancer case, you can only develop this kind of very simple ground station. Okay. This is the Yagi antenna. Okay? Yagi antenna. And the Yagi antenna is like I said, connected to the transceiver uh, and then it connects to the uh, non PC. Like this. Very, very simple uh, ground station can be developed. And the, on the uh, PC, you, will, you can develop this kind of the ground station software like this. And to uh, get the very quick information uh, from the satellite. This is quick, uh, say, quick, quick uh, recognition of the satellite state is very important. Because uh, if sometimes you should send some command to the satellite in order to do that, do that you can quickly, you should quickly get the, uh, what the satellite is going on in space. Okay, so this kind of the quick loop, this, it is called a quick loop, but uh, this kind of the very, very uh, comprehensive 
uh, type of the ground station software should be developed. Okay? And in this case, so this is the ground station for cancer, which was developed in 1999. And in this case, uh, it uh, displayed the gyro, gyro is a, a rotational speed of the cancer. And it also showed the solar cell output. Okay? And it, it also showed the battery voltage. And also, it shows some uh, the list of the command, and you can select uh, from this command which command to send, and then uh, send uh, this command to the, uh, the satellite. So this can uh, this is a very very simple, a very uh, the typical type of ground station software. And so, if we have time, please develop this kind of software on your PC. Okay, and if, as I said before. Once a satellite is launched into the space, and once a rocket is launched into the space, you cannot contact uh, this uh, satellite or rocket system. This is called a non-maintenance system. Non-maintenance system. This, this word is very important. A satellite, even a cancer, cannot be contacted until the end of its mission, once it is loaded on the rocket or body. Okay, so you, you hand your cancer to the rocket side, and then you cannot do anything. Okay? This is called the non maintenance system. And in the space case, for the satellite case, sometimes the satellite should survive in space for more than 10 years without any human interactions. There is no such kind of system on the ground. Okay? For the car case, maybe you will do some maintenance once per year or once per two years or so. Or even the atomic reactor, you will do some of the maintenance occasionally. But in space, you cannot do anything. Once it, was, it is launched. So, this is a very, very special feature of the satellite system. Okay? And so, what you should do? So, what you should do? Okay? So, what you should do? You should imagine all the possible events and anomalies which may happen on cancer or satellite and prepare countermeasures for them as many as possible. So, imagination is very important. You should imagine what may happen. What kind of anomaly may happen in a cancer or something? And prepare countermeasures for them. This is very, very important. You should do that. Please do that in this cancer experience. Okay? And one another thing is that you should try as many ground tests as possible in various settings to ensure normal operation of the cancer. This kind of ground test is also very important. Okay? For example, you should succeed. 10 consecutive trials on the ground. Okay, not one or two, 10 consecutive trials. Then you have cancer to be well provided in space. Okay? 10. At least 10. Hopefully, maybe 20 or so. Okay? So you, you should do a lot of tests during on the ground. Okay? So this these two factors are very important. Then please um, take, uh, keep these factors in mind during the cancer. Okay, uh, in my final part, I'd like to show you some uh, image of the mission. In order to give you some image of the mission, I'd like to show you some examples of the cancer up to now. So, as I said before, this is our uh, the memorial first cancer, which was developed in 1999. Uh, and it, so maybe as, this, as I said before, this is the solar cell. And this is the second battery, and the uh, power generated on the solar cell stored in this uh, say, uh, second battery. And we did, inside of this structure, we have a very small wheels, wheels. And it, uh, this is rotated using the motor. And if, the, so if, if this wheel, wheels rotate, then the satellite rotate in the other, other, other direction. So, okay? so this is a kind, kind of the reaction wheels. Okay? Reaction wheels. And it, also, we have a, a launch rock using the nine wire. And the nylon wire is very strong, so it can keep something, it can lock something. And this nylon wire will be cut using the nichrome line. Nichrome line is a heater. And then it will release something. So this is very usual way of lock and the release mechanism of the, uh, for the micro nano picosatel. And we used uh, that uh, in this uh, experiment. Okay? And the, yes. And the RF communication, so it has the, uh, the communication antenna here, and it can make a link and down axis. And if all the data generated in this satellite will be stored in this WSTR field. 
that we belong. Okay? And in addition to that, the information is downlink to the ground. So we can check the downlink data and the content of the WEP long so uh, to check whether the communication system was good or not. You can check that. So this is the kind of the redundancy, redundancy of the data storage. Okay? And the, so these are the result of our first scan study. Uh, this is the, the time. The horizontal is show the time and the vertical is the uh, uh, rotational speed. Maybe you can see that uh, using the command from the ground, the satellite uh, changes its rotational uh, speed, right? Okay? First rotation, stop, and first rotation in the, in the different direction, so on. And this is also the output of the solar cell, solar power, uh, for these three of the solar cells. We have the three solar cells in the maybe 120 uh, degree separation. And then uh, you can see that, uh, uh, say, uh, because of this rotation of the satellite, uh, this kind of the, the, uh, different uh, amount of the solar cell is generated, solar power is generated in, in three solar cells. And the second cancer, which was also developed in 1999, which is very, very simple cancer. So you can make this kind of the circuit board and the sensor board, and the, this is the communication system, and they only put into this uh, can, and they make a tape, uh, tape, a, 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 Connected this uh, body part and top part. Very, very simple cancer. And it works very well. So, uh, you can make this kind of very simple uh, cancer. And as I said, you know, this is the third uh, cancer in 1999. And the, it has a camera here. And the, this is the antenna, which is made by the uh, measure, you know, the measure, to uh, measure something. Okay. And this is very good for the antenna. This is stainless metal, okay, uh, metal metal, and this is very good for the uh, antenna because uh, during the launch it is rounded like this, and after the release from the rocket, it okay, like this, okay, and it, this kind of uh, you can say everyday life, you can say seems uh, can also be used for the cancer because it makes your know, cancer very slow. Okay. So this kind of the uh, things. Also, we use in night And in 2000, uh, we did uh, different experiments. So this is a GPS experiment. So this is two cats. And it has a kind of lot of uh, antenna. And also, we, we put the GPS receiver on top of a camera. OK? And the experiment looks like this. And the, uh, we launched three cats, two from our university and one from the Tokyo Institute. And they, each of them had a uh, GPS receiver. And it, they also have a cross ring. Cross ring means the uh, RF communication capability between the satellite, between the cancer. And by communicating this kind of the cancer, they can exchange the uh, position information uh, obtained by the GPS. And then we can get a very precise estimation of the other cancer position. This is called the differential GPS experiment. Okay? And this, why we did uh, this kind of experiment? Because uh, this is a good experiment for future formation flying experiments. Formation flying means several satellites uh, are doing uh, collaboratively one mission. And in order to do that, uh, the position of each uh, satellite can be uh, precisely controlled. And in order to do that, uh, in order to do that, you need a very precise information of the other uh, satellite is where the other satellite. So this kind of the differential GPS experience or experiment can also be performed using the cancer, multiple cancer. Okay, this is one of the utilization of the cancer. Not only the one cancer, but you can uh, use uh, several cancers to uh, collaborate with a certain kind of missions. And the, uh, also we uh, developed a very very unique cancer in 2000. This is a standard. So this cancer has, uh, you say, uh, can sense that it is landed on the ground, and after sensing the landing, it stands up automatically. Like this. Okay. So this, this is a very, very unique idea. And the, the student uh, trial and error many types of this kind of leg system, okay? A standard leg, leg system like this, and finally, uh, they made this kind of leg system. And then, when we found the cancer from the desert, so we 
very, very nice. Okay, so you have a So this kind of uh, cancel also can be possible. And uh, taking a picture from the sky is very, very attractive missions. And so many type of such kind of mission appear uh, in uh, several years. And maybe so this is a 2005 case. And if a student uh, so buy a very small uh, camera from the Kihaba and put that on the cancer, and like and the cancer campaign, very very good picture. Maybe at the altitude of 3,000 meters and so on. Okay, so this is very uh, easy now. And uh, in addition to that, in 2001 we started uh, in, we started a new type of the uh, mission called the Kamba competition. So. I, I propose this competition. So this this competition is very very simple. If the if the cancer has a GPS receiver, it can know where the cancer is and the, to which direction the cancer is flying. And then we teach the cancer where the target is beforehand. Then the cancer automatically control its, for example, the parafoil, okay, uh, to toward the target point. And the one the cancer which comes nearest to the target point will win this competition. This is very, very simple competition. So this is called comeback competition. Come back to the target point. So this is called comeback competition. Okay? And it, we started in 2001. And in 2002, we have uh, this kind of entries. So three teams from our university, University of Tokyo, and one from Kyushu University, and one from Nihon, and one from Tohoku but from Tokyo Institute of Technology and from the United States, Stanford University, Joy. And most of them are using this kind of the parafoil. You know the parafoil? If you put the light, light string, then it goes right, and you put the red string, and it goes right. Okay? This automatically uh, controlled by the subject. No human interaction is allowed. This is a rule. Okay? No human interaction is allowed. Only the, uh, the cancer controlled by themselves. Okay, and it, uh, this year, maybe you can see this kind of the flying bug type. Uh, this is called flying bug type using parafoil. So, but Toho University joined with a very very unique cancer. This is a roving bug, rover. After the landing, it cut the parachute and roving back to the target point. It takes very long uh, hour. For example, it sometimes takes maybe three or four hours to go to the target point because the uh, landing. Landing point is maybe three or four kilometers away from the target point, so it should go back to the target point very, very slowly. Okay. okay, but it works. So, this kind of the how to get to the target point okay, uh, is also the another kind of the mission idea. And the, so, this is the history of the flyback using the parafoil type and also the low result. The horizontal axis shows the year, and the vertical axis is the minimum distance. And if in 2002, uh, University of Tokyo's one uh, cancer made a very good result, 45 years. It is very, very good result. Okay. And if this cancer is very, okay. So this one, this can, this can made just 45 minutes. And if in the high altitude, the wind is very strong, so it rolls away in, into the downstream direction. And it, it, uh, it goes down about maybe the three or four kilometer away. Then going down, and there is a, I say a low altitude, not windy, not so strong, and it goes back to this target point, and finally it touched down to the 45 meter away from the target. It was very very good result. But as you see that uh, as time goes by, the flyback time does not make does not make a very good result, and during that time the rover improved. And it, finally, in 2006, the Tohoku University rover made a six minute to the target. Very, very good result. And finally, in 2008, it, it just zero minute. It hit the, the target point and stopped. Zero minute. A very, very good result. Okay? So this kind of the improvement of your system is also a very important part of your cancer experiment. So uh, let me show briefly uh, some uh, cancer example. So this is a private. This is very very typical private. This is a parafoil, and this is a main body, cylindrical main body, open grass. 
same so-called main body and lead to this kind of problem. This combination is very difficult. Right? And this is very unique. It is a, a triangular type uh, shaped wing. Okay. During the rocket, it, it is stuck. And after the release from the rocket, it is off. It just like a wing. Okay. So this kind of the, uh, treatment has been done. And also our university made this kind of the, uh, wing type uh, test. And this is also the wing. And the, so yeah, this kind of, this is a full change to technology, and this is also the wing. Okay, and this is a robot. So uh, this is the open one. Okay, the, uh, the diameter is something like 150 millimeter. So this is a open glass uh, typical size. And the length is something like 200 meter. So this is uh, like this. Like this. And so in 2008, uh, so this is the uh, earliest result, uh, combat protection result. And the third place is the uh, Tokyo Institute of Technology, 903 meter. And second place is the uh, University and the 800 meter. And as I said before, the Tohoku University made zero meter very good result. And which one? This one. Okay, in this way, uh, many types of the cancer has been developed up to now. And finally, I would like to give you some idea of how to develop, create your missions. Okay? And so mission creation of satellite and cancer. And there are several types of the mission. One is a GPS measurement and downloading to the ground. So this is one type of mission. And the taking pictures, okay, or sometimes uh, controlling its direction is another type of mission. And communication will be the important mission. And also institute a measurement of something. For example, the measurement of the temperature, the atmospheric uh, pressure, or some bio, uh, ultraviolet uh, radiation, and something like that. It's very good so there are many types of missions. And it tips to create cancer missions. So from this kind of variety of missions, you should select something, some missions. And uh, while selecting the cancer uh, missions, you should see this kind of tips. First, sensor missions. As to the sensor, uh, what kind of the I would say uh, element to the sensor should be decided considering what kind of sensor are better and how easy uh, they are uh, if you can implement this sensor. There are many types of sensors, such kind of temperature, pressure, GPS, accelerometer, sunlight, gyro, ultraviolet, sun, infrared, so many types of sensors. So uh, you can select uh, some sensors which is very uh, easy to uh, obtain and very easy to improve. So this is a the second one is actuator. Okay. Also, you can uh, select the actuator. Actuator uh, considering the availability and the power and force. Motor, nichrome line to cut nylon wires. Magnet, utilization shock of landing. So you can use a shock of the landing to do something. So this is another type of the, uh, actuator. And the spring, the gravity, you can also use some gravity. There are many things you can use for the actuation. You can, see, you can see. And also, the on off switching is many times used for the cancer. Okay? And the triggering is important. What is a triggering event? Okay? And for example, the timer, computer timer will trigger something. Or some command print will trigger something. Or some event such as the landing or release from the rocket, that it will be the some triggering event, trigger something. And it, uh, you can also include some more higher level actions, such kind of the guidance control using the GPS. This is, a, for example, the combat competition. And the camera, LED lighting, and the standard, and the moving after landing, many types of the high level actions will be possible. Pretty simple. Okay. And the important consideration, another important consideration in mission creation, looks like. Right. Aiming at interesting but not so high, not so high technological level should be pressured. Okay, if you put very very, if you uh, make a very very high level goals, it's very difficult to achieve. Okay, 
And if you cannot achieve it, it will be also zero point. So you should avoid that situation. Okay. So that means that you should set the I would say, technological level within your capability or within your student capability. So this is very, very important. Okay? So that means that you should finish or your student should finish within the time limit, considering human resource and expertise. Or also sometimes the cost. And consider what you can do in the laboratory facility and available components. So this is these are very important considerations. Okay? The most important thing is to make what really works as design. So the cancer is a training for this. Okay. Making high level mission is not a goal. It's not a say, mission of cancer. The cancer mission is to uh, make what really works as design. Okay. So this is a uh, uh, key system. And usually, task requires almost twice as long time as expected. Okay. For example, you guess maybe you can guess maybe it requires one week to develop this. But it usually takes two weeks to develop. Okay. Because the system will not behave as you expect. This is evident happens. So you need a, a larger uh, say, schedule margin. Okay, if you make a schedule. You should include maybe a little uh, say, some uh, schedule margin when you make a schedule. So this is very, very important. And it step up from easy level to higher levels. Okay? And it, maybe you can start with a very low level, a low technological level of cancer. And if you get experience and if you get uh, skills, then you can aim for more higher level technological level, a technological objective, technological aim, and so on. Okay, this kind of the stepping up is very important. And many students in Japan are doing this. Okay. And finally, consider how to verify your design by test. Okay. As I said before, the ground test is very important to make your satellite reliable, your cancer reliable. But if there is no way to test your cancer, it's an impossible to make your satellite reliable. So you can Consider how to verify your design by this ground. Okay, so this is also available. Okay, so now uh, I think uh, it's almost time, so we try to finish. Uh, I'd like to finish my first lecture now, and then I'd like to continue uh, maybe 10 minutes after uh, the 10 minutes break. It's okay? Okay, uh, I'd like to continue in, in, in my first lecture. Uh, only, only the small things. So, uh, yeah, everything is here. Everyone here? Anita. Very short time. 
and it, uh, it has been surviving in space for more than nine years. So it was amazing that it was space, uh, surviving in space for nine years. All the, almost all the parts of this uh, cube that was coming from Akihabara. You know Akihabara? <laughs> Have you been there? No. Yeah, you? Oh. So it is an electric town. So every day, the student, uh, you know, University of Tokyo is a very good place, location. It is, you can go to the Akihabara by bicycle. Okay. Every day, the student go to the Akihabara uh, by bicycle to buy something. And first we did, first thing we did was to check whether these parts can survive in space or using the uh, space environmental test, such kind of the vacuum, okay, vibration, radiation, and so on. And from them, we can select several parts which works, which can work in space, and then we develop our cubes. So it was very cheap, okay? And usually, the space development requires very, very expensive parts. For example, this kind of thing, the bubble, a bubble, electric bubble in the space station. You know how much it is. You know how much it is. It usually costs a hundred thousand US dollars. Just one bubble. Okay. Very, very expensive. So this is usually. But if you buy something from a uh, an electric town like Akihabara, uh, and check whether it survives in space or not, then you can make some spaces very cheap. So this is our style of the development. Okay? So this is a very unique type, very new type of satellite development, which was very different from the usual uh, very big space organization activity. Okay. And in addition to uh, this kind of satellite development, we should also get some skills and know how to ground operation, frequency acquisition, and launch opportunity search. And this activity we did by ourselves. So as a result, we can get everything. We can get every know-how and skills to go into the space. So this is very important. So not only the satellite development. Satellite development is not enough. So you should also uh, do many things in addition to the satellite development. And you should uh, get some skills, you should get some skills in, in that direction. And the, uh, triggered by the success of the two universities, CubeSat, many universities in Japan start the, uh, this kind of study, this kind of CubeSat uh, development. CubeSat was larger satellite development. And especially, uh, primarily for the uh, educational object, but uh, some universities are now getting more practical study beyond the education. So this is the kind of state of and the University of Tokyo's history of the nanosatellite and microsatellite development. And the, our first CubeSat was launched by the uh, Russian rocket named Roka in 2003. So uh, this is, has been surviving in space for nine years. And the, the second CubeSat, which is very similar to the first CubeSat, was launched in 2005 using the, also the Russian rocket Cosmos. And our third satellite, which is a 30 meter ground resolution remote sensing satellite called the Prism, was launched first by Japanese university, Japanese uh, rocket H2A in 2009. And now, we are now waiting for the launch of a full satellite, Nano Jasmine. And maybe uh, I expect it to be launched in next year, okay, like this. And it, we started uh, maybe uh, two or three, three years ago, a new type of the satellite development project named the Hodoyoshi project. And it, in this Hodoyoshi project, the first uh, satellite will be launched with at the end of this year, 2012. Okay. So uh, these are the current status of the University of Tokyo. And then our first satellite, Cyborg CubeSat site, one kilogram, 10 centimeter CubeSat site, the first right. And it, uh, the main mission is a Pico bus, very small bus demonstration in space. And also we implement small cameras here and to do some uh, remote sensing experiment. And it, uh, as the OBC on board computer, we uh, implement a very small uh, conventional uh, PIC processor, which is 8-bit processor, a, a little old processor. But it was found that this was very, very strong against the radiation. It's very strong against radiation. There is almost no radiation phenomenon during these nine years. So it was very uh, strong against radiation. 
and the communication system, we use an amateur ham uh, engineering uh, frequency, okay, like this. And the uh, speed was very, very low, just 1 to 2.2 kilometers. Okay, and the, we have a small cameras here. And the, uh, initially, uh, we think that we expect that uh, it can survive in space for two months. And we scheduled all the exper experiment uh, within two months. But fortunately, it has been surviving in space for more than nine years. Okay. And the, this is a launch scene using the rocket. And this is some example of the picture taken by this camera and downloading to the ground. And it, this is also the student idea. So this kind of the image is distributed to the many users, mobile phone users of Japan, who enjoy this kind of image on this mobile phone. So this is a, a kind of a, a, a no charging service. Uh, this is called Cyber Station. This kind of the outreach activity also performed in this CubeSat. And second CubeSat, the design was the same as the first CubeSat. But at the time of, uh, when our CubeSat was ready, uh, the JAXA, a Japanese space agency, developed their own solar cell, like it's called C, Kappa Indium Gaium Selenoid solar cells. Okay. And this solar cell was uh, expected to be very tolerant against the radiation. And they want to test, the JAXA people want to test it in space. But if they implement their uh, solar cell on the uh, JAXA satellite, they should wait for about five years. Okay? But we are satellite is ready, so I ask him. So if we want, if we want uh, please implement your uh, solar cell on our satellite and test it in space. And they are very happy. So, this kind of very quick test of age of the newly developed uh, so, uh, space technology is very, very good application of this kind of small satellite. Okay. And uh, as a result, we made a contract with uh, this uh, JAXA people, and they implement their solar cells. And they actually replace one solar cell, original solar cell, with their solar cell and test it in space. So it is very, very interesting uh, study. And then uh, our third satellite called Prism is very, very unique satellite. So in the first CubeSat and second CubeSat, it, it, they are rather educational objects. And but we want to, we wanted to, uh, we say, graduate from education to more practical satellite. So in this uh, third satellite Prism, we are aiming for more practical application of the satellite, uh, say, especially the remote sensing. And the, uh, the key technology in this prism is this kind of the extensible boom. And the, at the end of the boom, we implement small lens. Okay? And as a result, it constitutes a long focal lens optical system. Okay? And using this long focal lens optical system, we can expect to obtain 30 meter ground resolution as image. And these are uh, several images taken by this prism. So the signal to noise ratio is not so good, but uh, you can see that the several rivers around here, and the, after checking uh, on the map, it was found to be 30 meter widths, and so uh, we can assure that less than 30 meter ground resolution can be achieved uh, using this uh, long, long, long optical uh, systems. Okay, and we can obtain many type of this kind of image on the Earth. And the, so this is a flight model which was uh, finished in 2008 and it was launched in 2009 using the Japanese H2 alone. And the, so uh, the special figure features of this uh, uh, prism is that we have uh, many type of the onboard computer. We have five onboard computer. Uh, two uh, pick, uh, as I said before, uh, the same processor used in the CubeSat, and the two H8 processors and one SH2 processors. And by combining this kind of the variety of the OBC, this uh, prism has a very high level of the uh, say, uh, information processing. And our uh, fourth satellite, Nano Jasmine, is very also very unique. It does not say uh, see the ground, see the earth. It sees it. It looks at the stars. So the main objective of this uh, Nano Jasmine is to obtain a very precise 3D map of more than 500,000 stars in space. 
Okay? And this, this field is called uh, astrometry in space science. And in the astrometry field, formerly in 1989, Hipparagas satellite, which is a European satellite, was launched. This is only the one, only one astrometry satellite in space. Okay? And it, it was 1.4 ton and costing about maybe uh, more than 300 uh, million US dollars. So, but uh, this satellite is just 35, 33 kilograms and aiming at almost the same precision, precise, almost the same performance as the Hipparco satellite. Okay. So it, it requires a very, very high technology. So it takes maybe, it took about four or five years to develop this satellite. And it is almost finished. And now we are waiting for the launch using the Cyclone 4 rocket, Ukrainian rocket. Uh, and the launch space will be in Brazil. So it's very, very interesting. The rocket is from Morai uh, and the launch site is in Brazil. So we should bring uh, 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 an adjustment to the Brazil. Okay. Very near to the Amazon River. Okay. So this is our post -up. And as I said before, we started a, a new uh, say, uh, satellite development project called Hodoyoshi Project four years, four years ago, three, no, three years ago. And it, the first satellite in this Hodoyoshi Project called Hodoyoshi-1, okay? Hodoyoshi-1 will be launched at the end of this year. So this is the uh, five meter, not five meter, maybe the six meter ground resolution, four band, RGBR, red, green, and a near infrared band uh, remote sensing satellite. And uh, this is the bottom of the satellite. Maybe you can see. So, this is the, I would say, aperture of this uh, uh, telescope. Okay? And it, uh, the cost, uh, the, uh, the weight is about 50 kilograms and the size is 50 centimeter cube like this. And it, in this uh, satellite, we developed a new type of the telescope like this. Uh, it is uh, maybe 6 meter ground resolution from 500 kilometer altitude, 15 kilograms of the system like this. It's a newly developed technology was used, was used in this telescope. Okay. And the, okay. So these are the, some list of the Japanese university satellite uh, made by uh, the made by many students, made by students. Okay, so uh, the first satellite in Japan was the uh, first university satellite in Japan was 2003 to CubeSat. And at the time, also the Tokyo Institute of Technology developed their CubeSat and launched all together. And our second CubeSat was in 2005. And since then, many satellites, total 17 satellites, were developed and launched into the space by Japanese universities. And the, the important thing is, is that from these CubeSat, from these universities, these, let's say, let several part for the university who already participated in the CANSAT program. Okay. So maybe most of the university developed this kind of uh, space systems uh, participated in the CANSAT program. So this is some evidence that the CANSAT was a very, very good starting point for the many universities to develop uh, this kind of space systems. OK, so uh, first let me conclude uh, this first lecture. And then going into my second lecture. Okay, so in this lecture, uh, I'd like to show you some similarities and difference between the CANSAT and the space satellite. Okay, maybe uh, from this lecture you can get some hints about what what is what is the common thing and what is the difference between the satellite and the CANSAT. This is very important. Thing. Mission in terms of the missions, environment, active trade systems, ground operations, and development systems. Some part is very simple, and some part is very different. Okay? And second one is, what you can learn in cancer. This is also very important. What you can learn in cancer. And various levels of cancer development, and cancer subsystem overview. And finally, I'd like to show you some hint of the team of your students. Okay, and it, this is a satellite case. Okay, satellite mission case. First thing about the satellite, which was launched, which is launched in the space. Okay, satellite, not the cancer, satellite. 
what is special features of trans space, which leads to space utilization? You know that the development of the satellite and launching, launching, launching the satellite into space requires a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of people. Okay? Why you launch your satellite into space? Why you use the satellite? This is because that the space has a very, very unique features, very, very good features, which are not realized on, on ground. Okay. So this is why you launch the satellite into the space. What is that? The first one is that it can provide a 3D view. Okay. So you know that maybe so you are living on the Earth surface. So you know that the radius is about okay. And if you fly on the airplane, maybe ten kilometers, okay, ten thousand meters. So that means that you are living in very very thin skin of this earth surface. Okay, so. We are living in a 3D world, but actually we are only living in a 2D world. Only the surface of this earth. You can see? But if you launch a satellite, okay, satellite, you can have a very, very wide view. This is called 3D view. 3D view of the earth surface. Like this. So this is the most important part. Why you launch your satellite? Okay, and so uh, using utilizing these features of the space, many types of the mission appear. Such kind of the, so it says that communication system, because uh, it can send the communication uh, signal to the many places all at once, and also the broadcasting. This is the similarity. And the GPS, meteorological, and the observation. These are uh, the same mission which utilize this kind of. 3D view uh, characteristics of the space. Okay, the so second one is here. The satellite has very, very high speed. It can very quickly come over the many places. You know how fast the satellite is. The satellite speed is something like uh, 8 km per second. Per second. So it means that. Uh, Feature from us. So you can go quickly to a certain place or you can monitor all of us very quickly. So using these uh, uh, features, as observation, this is a monitoring mission. Also. The third one is uh, above atmosphere. So this is also very important. Why? Because uh, you know that there are many signals coming from the space. But Atmosphere will be the barrier of this kind of signal, and only some signal is going to the ground. Okay, and they will be cut or absorbed by this atmosphere. On the ground, you can only obtain a certain wavelength of the signal. This is optical and also the okay. RF. And so, uh, but if you have a satellite here. You can measure many types of the wavelengths almost without any prevention, or almost with, without any barriers. So this is another very important uh, feature of the space. And if using uh, these features, uh, for example, the space telescope, like uh, because uh, you say during uh, using this atmosphere, by this atmosphere, the, the sky may will be bright like this. But at this point, there is no such kind of this is very important. And various spectral observation will be possible. And it, also the solar power generation using this feature because uh, there is no cloud. And every time you can obtain almost the same amount of the solar power in space. So this is uh, about atmosphere characteristics. And fourth topic is the long term, long time micro G environment. So this is another very important feature in space. Even on ground, you can obtain a microgravity uh, environment. For example, you know that the 
Okay, so for example, you have the long drop tower. Okay, you have a drop tower, and then you drop something. Then inside of this say, uh, structure, you have a microgravity. But as you know, as you see, that uh, say, the time is very, very limited, just like uh, maybe 3 seconds to maybe 20 seconds, maybe not 20, maybe 10 seconds. So very, very uh, say, uh, short time of the microgravity. Or you can use a uh, jet frame, you know, jet frame, okay? And the, during the descent of jet frame, you can obtain uh, microgravity, but, but it's also very short, such kind of 20 seconds and so on. Okay? So, this is not enough. Maybe this is not enough. In order to, for example, make a certain material, okay, or certain medicine, you can, uh, you should require, for example, the one month, two months, three months, uh, microgravity environment, but it cannot be obtained on the ground. So uh, the space can be used for such kind of the long duration micro G environment. And the second fourth, fifth one is the space as ex exploration time. This is another very important. For example, Hayabusa, Japanese uh, interplanetary uh, explorer Hayabusa went to the Hito Hitokawa and get some samples and going back to the Earth. So this kind of the uh, space exploration itself is a time. Example, uh, planet, small bodies, particles, fields, and so on. So uh, some satellite measure the uh, say, geomagnetic magnetic field, magnetic field in the space. Or some particle, plasma particle in the space. This is another important realization of the space. And the sixth one, so this is recent real here, human in space. So you know that the uh, United States have United States were rising galactic. As I said, space travel business started the space travel business. Maybe you can go to space if you pay something. Okay. It's very expensive, you know. That, uh, how much does it cost for going to space and uh, going to, for example, the space station to stay one week? You know that? It is about maybe something like 21 million years ago. But I heard that the reason it is going up to no difference for us. <laughs> still, still, still too expensive. No difference. But maybe this cost will be lower, getting lower as time goes by. And maybe and you can go uh, for this kind of space uh, very easily in the near future. Okay, so this is another human space. So these are very important features of space which can be used for mission creation. Okay, so please keep in mind that mission creation is very, very important in space. Maybe, I think currently only uh, some portion of the space features are used for the mission. But there are many, many other types of the, uh, features of the space which can be used for the mission, space mission. So please think of a new type of the mission. So this is very important. Okay, so uh, please answer these questions. So, what features? What features? Which features? Special uh, special features of the space, which I said from one to six, are utilized in the satellite in the next run. Okay, please uh, I, uh, please answer each of them. Okay, and there are six types of features: providing 3D view, high speed coverage of atmosphere, and so on. Please ask, answer. Which features are used for each mission? Broadcasting. Hmm? How about this here? Oh, sometimes some 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 features are about this is like that. Maybe provide a three D view. Yes. Because uh, it can because I send many signals all at once to the many recipients. So okay, so space telescope. Hmm? Ah, exploration targets. Five and also three. 
know about this. Because you know, if there is an atmosphere, the star image will be bright. Right? Okay? You can get a very pinpoint static uh, image of the star on the ground. So, but uh, about atmosphere, you can get very clear, not moving by image of the star. Okay, so, so space RF observations are there. So this was called uh, Haruka, which was developed in Japan, VLDI. Very long baseline interferometer is called VLDI. So what kind of feature of space was used for this issue? So the next one. Five. Five. Yes. Five and three. Also. Three. Because that, you know that many wave of RF, many RF, uh, many wave of RF will be coming from the deep space. But most of them will be shut at this atmosphere. Okay, this Haruka is obtained, this kind of the many wavelengths are signal from the deep space. So this is above atmosphere is very important characteristics. Okay, so next one. Space prior unit. So this is also a very unique satellite which was developed, uh, launched in 1995. It was launched by the Japanese rocket and it stayed in space for one year. And during one year, it can make a several experiments, such kind of the growing some material or growing some medicine inside of the satellite. And after one year, it was retrieved by the space shuttle and going back to the ground. And the, the uh, researcher can check the inside material and so on. Okay. So this is called the space prior unit. And then what kind of feature? Uh, Long time hydrogen environment. So one year hydrogen environment was used. Okay, thank you very much. And the, the next one is uh, out observation satellite, SAR, synthetic aperture radar. So this is uh, not a uh, passive type of the uh, sensor, but uh, this antenna will emit RF signal to the ground. And then the reflected signal on the ground is coming back to this antenna. Okay? So this is called synthetic aperture radio. Okay, this is a two-way radio. Okay, so then what kind of feature was used? Okay, so the radius. It can measure all the Earth's surface, drove surface, uh, very quickly and make some, I would say, uh, ground utilization map and so on. Okay? Next one, deep space probe, Hayabusa. Okay, so two years ago, the Hayabusa went back to the Earth and the Japanese, uh, many people are very, much, very much excited about that. So Hayabusa. And so this went to the Tokawa and get some small samples and bring it back. So what kind of features we use? Number two? Number two? Five? Yes, yes. Yeah, thank you. So five, yes. The Hayabusa is the type. And also, now, Japan is now waiting on uh, the preparing for the Hayabusa 2. It, it will go to the different aspect and get something that goes to the yes. And meteorological satellite. Okay, so you know, this is called Himawari it can provide the image of the cloud and it will, this image will be used for the uh, as, uh, weather prediction. Okay? So this is called a meteorological satellite. meteorological So Yes, thank you very much. Three. And it, not three, exactly not three, because it is on the geosynchronous orbit. Geostationary orbit. So it stays on the Earth. Okay? On, 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 on the southern point of the sky. And it can every time see the same place. Okay. And so it, 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 it will use a 3D feature, 3D view feature. And it, initially, so the uh, Himawari uh, meteorological satellite in Japan looks like this. And, but it changed into this shape. Uh, 
challenges from uh, uh, in our six and seven. Six and seven it also gives a 3D view uh, features uh, of, of the uh, space. And the lunar exploration satellite, Kaguya, which was uh, launched in 2006, five or six, and the uh, various uh, say, uh, sensors uh, were on board uh, to this, uh, observe the moon. Okay, so maybe you can see that there are two additional satellites. So these two satellites will be released uh, in the uh, lunar orbit. And using the relative position change of these three satellites, uh, gravity of the moon was measured. Okay, so it's very, very interesting. Very, very successful. And what kind of features will you say about? Especially the and 3D Thank you very much. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And the, so uh, these are the say, example of the mission, especially for the satellite. So this is in space. Okay, and the, I will not go in uh, go into the detail, but uh, in order to obtain this kind of missions, this kind of the step, initial uh, conceptualization step was used uh, for uh, define the mission and the design uh, some uh, conceptual uh, satellite. And the, this kind of the feedback will be calculated. Feedback is performed to finally define some kind of mission. <laughs> but I, I will not go in, in to the detail now. And the satellite, uh, that was a satellite. And then, Kansas. Kansas was a little different. But Kansas still has a very special features. Because it goes into the satellite. Sometimes it goes into the altitude, 4 kilometers in the case. And it, uh, in the Japanese rocket case, it goes into the 500 meters. OK? And if you use a, a summer back, no, no, it is balloon. It can go up to maybe the 100 meters or something. But it's still in the sun altitude. And so maybe in the Kansas case, you can use this kind of a situation. Okay? And you can make the most of this kind of thing, because it's a special feature of the Kansas, and then uh, create your missions. And as I said before, uh, there are many type of the mission candidate of the Kansas. Sensoring, actuation, on thinking and higher reduction, and by combining this kind of special features of the cancer and this candidate, please create some uh, good missions in your uh, cancer. Okay, so this is a, a cancer case. So a little different from the sat satellite to the cancer. Okay, the satellite will use some special features of the space, and the cancer will use special features of high altitude. So this is a different. Okay, so the next, I'd like to show you about the space environment. Okay, if you design the space system, satellite, you should you should consider the space. What is the space environment? Is what the space environment is different from the ground environment? Okay, for first the vacuum, vacuum environment. Okay, many of the glue or painting will be degraded because of the vaporization of the particle somewhere. So you should use a special glue or painting which is tolerant in space should be used. Okay? So this kind of uh, thing you should consider. And also the cold welding below. Cold welding is a very, very dangerous uh, phenomenon. If you have a, this is a one metal, and this is another metal. So this is the same material. Okay? And usually on the ground, some can say uh, oxidized surface. Surface is oxidized. And then if it puts it like this, then it is not stick. But in space, and some oxidized surface is removed, then it can stick altogether. Okay. It is very, very strong stick. So if once it is stick like this, it will not be separated. For example, some valve or some uh, motor will have some such kind of failure. And sometimes it will not move. Okay. So this is called cold weather. This is called cold weather. And so how you can avoid that? How you can avoid that? Yes. In fact. 
For example, this is a let's say motor uh, motor shroud, and this is a motor. And so, okay, like this. And so, if this material and this material is different, no cold welding works. But if you use a different material, another big problem will occur. You know what? You know what? If these two materials are different, cold welding will not occur. But uh, there is another big problem. Do you, do you know that?
So that means uh, the satellite itself, without any treatment, has a very, very high temperature in space. Okay? And so you should avoid this environment by changing the surface material. Surface material. You paint uh, with a white paint, and then you can reduce the, this, uh, the temperature lower. Such kind of uh, less than 100 uh, uh, degrees and so on. Okay? So in this way, uh, you need a thermal design of the satellite. But even if you use a thermal design, maybe the temperature inside of the satellite, inside of the satellite, okay, it will be minus 20 to 50 degrees, something like Even if you use the surface uh, treatment, maybe the inside temperature should be something like the minus 20. So it's a very, very large temperature difference. So your parts or equipment or components should survive in this kind of large temperature. So this is another very difficult part in space. But this is very similar to the, you know, the car. You know, the car. You know, the car should walk even at a very, very low temperature, such as in Hokkaido, in Japan, Hokkaido, sometimes in below minus 20 degrees. And also the engine loop of the, say, uh, car will go very high, so more than, maybe more than 550 uh, degrees and so on. So this is very similar to the car position. But in space, uh, in satellite, all the parts of the components should survive. This is a large difference of the temperature. OK, and the launch will provide the satellite with a very, very big vibration and shock and acceleration. Usually, vibration, no? Uh, acceleration is something like AG. AG means the satellite weight is becoming eight times more. So the satellite in, in this A to G, the satellite. Okay, this is a rocket. Rocket okay, and satellite will have a very big say this kind of pressure. And so usually this side wall may back okay, may do back back back. back, back. So you should avoid this kind of buffering on the side surface of the satellite in order to tolerate against this energy acceleration. So this is another very big say, uh, thing for the satellite design. And also the vibration is very, very strange. And shock, shock is coming from the pyro uh, device uh, for the uh, rocket. Okay? And so uh, this is shock that should be also very important. And the final one is the distance. If you use a cancer case, so you, you should communicate with a, with a cancer for over maybe the four kilometer, five kilometers, six kilometers, something like that. But if the satellite is going into the space, you can you should communicate with the satellite for over two thousand kilometers, three thousand kilometers. And so on. And if the satellite is going into the deep space, it should be more than 1.5. It should be more than uh, tens of uh, thousands of uh, hundred kilometers. Very, very long, long, long way. And so uh, the space is very, say, long distance. This is very uh, uh, standard feature of the space. And you should communicate with very, very long distance. But this is a space design. Then, with right to show, please, please consider what is the cancer environment? What is the cancer? For example, the vacuum environment. Maybe you don't care about the vacuum environment for the cancer. Okay? The radiation environment. Maybe there is not so much radiation in the world. Or even in the popular environment. So you don't care much about the radiation. How is the sound? Okay, in the artist experiment. Okay, RS experiment, it, it, was, uh, it is held in the uh, rocket, uh, desert. And so at the time, the heat is very strange. Sometimes inside, rocket temperature should be something like 80 degrees, 80 degree. And so we should think a little about the sun, but not so strange as in space. Okay? But this launch is very, very strange, even for the uh, cancer case. For, 
example, uh, if you launch uh, the cancer with the Aris rocket, okay, so the random vibration is more than the uh, usual uh, H2A or uh, such kind of launcher. So we should see such kind of the large uh, degree of the vibration form. And maybe you will launch your cancer using uh, the, uh, say, Noshiro event rocket, right? Then you should see further vibration. Maybe you will not use a vibration table here. Okay, so but uh, you should test your satellite using vibration. <laughs> okay, this is this is very important. Okay, if you are constant field with just this vibration, then it will fail. Okay, so you should use this. Okay, this kind of the vibration check is important. And maybe the acceleration is also very tough for the uh, okay. Maybe. I don't think it goes into as, as much as HG, but uh, it's something like a 4 or 5G will be exerted on the cancer. And so it's very difficult to uh, simulate this uh, high acceleration load on the ground. Okay. How would you do? <laughs> you have some idea? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very difficult. <laughs> huh? Okay. Please do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and every time we we uh, are say we don't know how to do acceleration, so we will not do any acceleration test. But please do this kind of vibration test. Okay. And the distance is uh, not so long distance, so it is it, it, it not be careful. And so maybe the launch environment is very similar to the uh, say, uh, real satellite. And so please check this vibration test uh, before launch. That is important. Okay, and the, in the space, in the satellite, real satellite case, in order to secure that our satellite will survive in space in this kind of harsh environment, we will do a lot of environmental tests, including vacuum tests, thermal tests, shock tests, and the RF pattern measurement tests, and thermal vacuum tests. So, uh, so this is a combination of the thermal environment and vacuum environment. So, uh, for the satellite development, this kind of the ground test is very, very important part of the development. Not only the satellite development itself, but also whether you are check whether your satellite is surviving in space or not, which is a very important task on the satellite development. Okay? So, this kind of the environmental test uh, has been performed for the satellite development. Okay. And the, uh, in order to uh, do uh, this kind of test, we are preparing uh, several uh, facility, testing facilities for the satellite tests. For, uh, for example, in our uh, university, we have a green booth. Okay, green booth. So you know that the green booth, something like a green booth, but not so uh, it's a high level green booth. Something like a class uh, 100,000 should be enough. 100,000, class 100,000, it's not so. I would say up here, but uh, uh, 100,000 crafts will be uh, adequate for the satellite development because the satellite does not write dust okay, in the development phase. And also, we have a vibration table, and also, we have a thermal bus which can control inside temperature from minus 70 to 100 degrees. Right. And but we don't have a thermal vacuum chamber, so we bring our satellite to the some outside organization to test our satellite, okay? And if uh, something like these kind of the facility will be required if we develop real satellite, okay? But uh, not, cancer will not be required. Cancer will not require this kind of facility. Only you can uh, manually do some ground test for the cancer. So this is a very, very big difference. Then, what is the difference in the systems? As I said before, this is a very typical satellite system. Okay? Very typical satellite system, including uh, this is a mission system, and the other is a bus system. And the bus system will include the CRDH, uh, communication, thermal structure and mechanism, power, and the sensor and actually This is sometimes called the uh, attitude control system, so, as I said before. So these are the constitution of the satellite itself. Then what is the cancer, difference of the cancer? Maybe the thermal control system will not be required for the cancer. So this is very different. This is one difference from the 
and the, for the power system. Okay. So satellite will survive in space for more than two or three years. And so it can obtain some energy, some uh, energy from a uh, solar cell. Then it requires solar cell. But for the cancer case, it's very short period, maybe several seconds or several minutes. Then you don't need any solar cell. So maybe the solar cell can move. So, but the other system will be required even for the cancer. Only the small part is different from the cancer. Uh, from, uh, different from the satellite case. But most of the say, subsystems are very similar from the cancer and the satellite. Okay. So this is uh, the uh, difference of the systems in terms of the system in the cancer and the satellite. Okay? So the, you should implement uh, some CRDA system, computer, memory in the cancer. And also you should implement sensor, some sensors and actually in the cancer. And also you should implement some communication system in, in the cancer. And the, you should implement some mission subsystem in the cancer. And the battery is required. Okay? Battery required. And also some structure and memory, of course, is required for the cancer. So, uh, okay, in this way, the uh, satellite and cancer uh, have a large in common uh, in terms of the systems. Okay, so let me briefly show our uh, example of the real satellite case uh, using the example of the uh, CubeSat. So this is a uh, CubeSat, our CubeSat type of. This is the outside structure and this is the inside structure. And the in inside structure is very, very unique. That we implement, this is a CRD, DH, and camera system on one board. And we implement a communication system on one board. And we implement some uh, power system on one board. And these board will be inserted into the motherboard on the bottom of this cube. This is very, very simple structure. Okay? And the, uh, so this is outside. And the, as I said before, I would say this is antenna. Okay? This antenna is first rounded uh, here, like this. And at this point, this Antenna is locked using the nylon wire. Nylon is a fishing wire. Okay? And after the release from the rocket, this nylon wire will be cut by the nichrome light. And then the antenna will be deployed. Okay? So this kind of the lock and the release mechanism was used using the nylon line and nichrome wire. Okay? And this is the inside uh, rope diagram of this tube uh, <coughs> So this is very similar to what I showed you in the uh, previous slide. And the, in this cancer, in this cube, our CubeSat has a three CPU. One is the onboard computer system. One PIT processor was implemented into this OPC system. And this is a transmitter system, which sends some information to the ground. Okay? And this is a CW, CW beacon transmission and receiver system which gets some signal from the ground, command from the ground. And this PX system and CWRF system also has one CPU. Okay? And the power line will provide power to G3 line separate. And the, from now it is important. Okay, so G3 CPU monitor the behavior of other CPUs. And if the behavior of other CPU gets wrong, it reset that this kind of the mutual monitoring was performed in this system. This is very important. For example, a certain radiation effect occurred in this OBC system. And the large current is coming from this uh, power system to the uh, OBC system uh, occurred. Then this TX system will cut this power line and reset the, uh, this OBC system. And this kind of the reset is very, very important. Uh, because it can revert uh, this OBC system. So using this reset, OBC system gets uh, correct again, gets healthy again. So this kind of the mutual monitoring and resetting will be the very, very important uh, technique to make all the systems in the healthy state. So uh, this kind of the, uh, treatment was uh, performed in the field side. And if, in addition to that, we have a solar cells here and battery. Okay. And this battery 
uh, charging circuit, charging and recharging circuit will uh, get in, uh, say, a source of power from the solar cells and charge this part. And also we have an analog sensor and the uh, digital sensor and so on. Okay? So these are very similar uh, to what I showed you before. Uh, this is very similar, uh, very typical to say, uh, system architecture of the satellite. And as a structure, so this is the cube sub structure. Okay. As I said before, uh, each say, subsystem uh, board is inserted into the motherboard, right? Okay. And the, uh, in addition to, the, to that, we have a several structure outside uh, of this uh, say, uh, board. And the, uh, in this size of the satellite, we don't care much about the structure. Okay. The small is beautiful. Okay. If the satellite is small, you don't care much about the structure because the uh, fundamental frequency gets larger if the sat satellite size is very small. And you don't care much about the buffering, as I said, of the buffering. Buffering, um, say, uh, subjectivity, buffering uh, strength is uh, proportional to the sub power of the legs. So that means that if their say, length becomes larger, the buffering strength will get weaker very quickly. But if the satellite is very small, then it is also very strong against the buffering. So you don't care much about the buffering strength. So in this way, in this small size, you don't care much about the structure, so you can make a very many holes on this size. And so you order to reduce the weight. So it, it is possible. You cannot do that for the large satellite, but the cube satellite is okay. okay. So in this way, the structure will be very simple. Also, the cancer structure should be very simple. Okay. And the ground station facility. So we implement a ground station system on our, uh, say, university, in our university. So we put the antenna on the top of our building, and we implement some uh, ground station uh, receiver transceiver uh, inside of uh, a laboratory. And they are connected by wires. And if this uh, is a, uh, receiver is connected to the uh, computer, and the student can operate the computer to operate the satellite. So you should make uh, this kind of uh, system for the satellite uh, case, for the real satellite case. And they also, uh, in order to because they communicate the satellite, which is very, very long, far away, then we can obtain, we, can, we should obtain this kind of large antenna. Okay. We have four meter S-band antenna, and we also operate with many other organizations in order for us to uh, use their uh, antenna. And we have the Mizusa, this is a, a, a Tohoku area, north part, northern part of Japan area is antenna. And also we are collaborating with the Swedish, Swedish antenna like this. Okay, so this is the real satellite. But uh, in the cancer case, you don't care much about such kind of things because, as, is, as I said before, the distance to the satellite is not so far, only the maybe several kilometers away. So then you can use this kind of the small antenna. This is called the Yagi antenna. Okay? Yagi antenna. Uh, also, you can use all the very small transceiver and the notification. And you can bring them. This is a portable, handy type. This kind of ground station you can bring it in no shiro, ice, and also in this ground you can bring it all everywhere. Okay, so this is the cancer. So you can make very you can make very simple ground station uh, for the cancer. Okay, next is the satellite development scenario. So this is the development scenario of our uh, CubeSat. The CubeSat development started in uh, 2000. Uh, September. And first we developed several BBM. BBM is uh, the sound for red board mode. Red board mode. Okay? So red mode is uh, how to say board on which you can make uh, various shape of the red. Okay. And this is a trial and error type of the uh, model. You can make trial and error on this uh, BBM model and be gradually Refine your concept of the satellite. Okay, so we developed two BBM 
uh, psi 1 and psi 2. And the, after about one year, we start the development of the EM. EM is called, stands for engineering model, engineering model. This is the model to check whether your satellite can survive in space or not. Environmental test will be the result of this uh, engineering model. Okay? And we develop three engineering models, psi 3. Three psi 3. We have three psi 3. Okay? Three engineering models. And then we fix our design at the end of engineering model phase. And then finally we develop prime model. We develop two prime models, psi 4 and psi 5. So in this way, real satellite case, you should develop many models. Maybe one or two real models, maybe three or four engineering models, and finally you develop a prime model. Okay? So uh, this kind of stepwise uh, development will be required for the satellite, real satellite case. But maybe for the cancer case, you don't have to do that. Maybe, uh, so this is a, so a picture of our students uh, developing the final phase of the satellite. Okay? So in the green room, they will wear this kind of white shirts and it, uh, avoid dust coming in. Okay? In that situation, in that environment, they will develop the final phase. Okay? But uh, maybe the cancer, you don't need that. Maybe you can uh, develop your cancer, not in the clinic, but not here. Okay. So maybe you don't use the equipment, right? No, no. Maybe you can, you can develop the cancer. Not so uh, Okay. And also, you don't need to develop many models. Maybe one model, only one model, or two models will be done. So this is a very simple. Uh, okay, so that's why you can reduce the whole cycle of the satellite program very short in the cancer cases. Okay, so this is the difference of the real satellite and the cancer cases. In this way, uh, let, let me summarize uh, the difference of the satellite and the cancer in several points. First is the systematic picture. In the cancer, you don't need any thermal system. And maybe minimum or no redundancy will be required because uh, there is short time span. Okay, for the satellite case, it will survive. It should survive in space for many years. Then you should prepare for a redundant system. So, as I said before, in the CubeSat case, but in the CanSat case, maybe no redundancy will be required. And as to the ground required ground test, okay, only the maybe the vibration or shock will be required for the CanSat case. Okay, look at much because uh, the CanSat is still uh, using the rocket launch. And maybe the sequence test will be required. Okay. This is the same like, uh, this is very similar uh, to the satellite case. As to the ground operation, you don't need a very sophisticated large antenna ground station, only the short range. So you can use small handheld area antenna. And the development process, you don't need any, uh, cancer doesn't need any clean rules. And it, this is BBM, EM plus FM, this is a, uh, uh, very simple case. And or EFM, that means that uh, you will develop EM and some part of the EM will also be used in the FM. This is called EFM. So this kind of very simple uh, process will be enough for the cancer. Okay? So in this way, the satellite development, satellite system, and the cancer development, cancer system is some part in common and some part very different. So please first I say understand this feedback and go into the cancer. Okay, what do you can learn in the cancer? So this is another very important. Okay, uh, let me summarize. First, you can learn mission creation and sequence generation. Mission creation and sequence generation is possible. Okay? This is a mission sequence. So this is very simple uh, cancer to explain, but even the can very simple cancer to explain, but you should define very long, let's say, line of mission sequence like this. Okay? So what is what, what the mission like this? A certain operation we do, the cancer will do a certain operation, but that, uh, even doing a very simple operation, you should make a very say, uh, detailed uh, mission sequence for the cancer. Uh, let me 
let me briefly avoid going to that. First, set up can set and put it into a locket and the turn on switch A. Okay, at this point, some thing, some part of the can set stop operation. Okay? And then locket side will be launch. Okay? Maybe it will take uh, sometimes it will take 15 minutes and sometimes it will take an hour. And you cannot contact and uh, not predict the time in this phase besides. You cannot contact your cancer and not predict the time in this phase. <coughs> okay? So you set your cancer and bring that hand there to the rocket side. And then you cannot do anything. Okay? And this time, rocket preparation time cannot be predicted many times. Okay? And then the rocket will launch with high acceleration or any vibration. Okay? And the, during that time, cancer may measure something. For example, the rocket vibration or rocket acceleration. This can be also the mission, as an entire mission. And the rocket, and write them into the memory. Because at this time, you can send the alert signal to the ground. The only you can do is to send something and you store that in the memory, okay? And the cancer start certain operation triggered by some switch at the time point of release from the rocket, okay? At the some altitude, the rocket will release the cancer. And maybe the cancer get some trigger. For example, the release of the rocket may be a trigger, okay? And then cancer starts something, start some operation. And during the descent, the cancer downing mission data okay, to the ground station, as well as write them in the memory. Okay? And it, maybe you can send some applicable command to do something, to tell the cancer to do something. Okay? It, 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 it may be also possible. And it, oh, the cancer will land after some time. Then landing may also trigger uh, reduction. Okay. And it, after some time after the landing, you can retrieve the data. This is the whole the mission sequence. Please write detailed mission secrets like this. Okay, so this is very important. Not only the mission creation itself, but also you should write this kind of the mission sequence precisely. So this is very important. Okay? So, uh, this kind of the mission creation and the sequence of generation can be learned in the cancer experiment. And also the satellite architecture design is another important thing. As I said before, uh, the cancer and satellite is almost the same subsystem. So, uh, you can uh, make the architecture design uh, just like a satellite in the cancer. And system analysis is also very important. So this is a feature Okay? And the system analysis. What is the system analysis? There are several uh, important system analysis. Weight budgeting, size budgeting, and power budgeting. So this is a very important uh, budgeting. Budgeting, what, what is the budgeting? Budgeting means uh, summarization of the required amount and meet with the requirement and the for example, this is a uh, table of the parts, our component, which will be on the satellite. We need a transmitter, which is weighing about 20 kilograms, and size is like this, and it will require a 60 watt power at the time of the activation. Okay, so this is one list. And we have uh, many lists. Usually the satellite will require, I think, uh, more than 100 lists. And uh, each has a temperature, allowable temperature, permissible temperature. So transmitter should, you say, behave within the temperature from minus 10 to 50 centimeters, right? And so each uh, component has its own permissible range of the temperature, right? So this is an uh, input to this power budget, uh, budget table, okay? This is table input to the budget table, okay? And then, in the budgeting, you should calculate totally uh, required weight. This is the weight budget. And the totally required size, this is the size budget. And the totally required power, this is the power budget. This is called budget. 
And if you get the totally required power, then you can design the solar cell and the battery. Okay? So this is called the budget. In order to do that, you need this kind of the budget. Okay. So this is very uh, so -so. And as I said before, uh, in the cancer case, you don't have to do the have to say, thermal design. So this temperature requirement will not be required for the cancer case. This is an example of the power budget. Because we are doing this uh, many times. This is uh, the satellite case. This is a satellite case. Okay? This is a satellite. So this is an uh, orbital gear. Uh, you know, the low Earth orbit will require about 100 minutes for one cycle. The satellite going around the Earth uh, for 100 minutes. Okay, during this time, there is a light and dark area. So, uh, when the, the sun is lighting, then it is the day, daytime. Okay, and the, the other is the nighttime. Okay, and so this is a power generation. During the daytime, you have a lot of power like this. So this is the sunlight. And if during the nighttime, you don't have any uh, power like this. Not the eclipse, eclipse, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, eclipse. And, it, okay? and it during the time, okay, during this period of time, okay, say, as I said before, each component has a sound power required. And so by summarizing, this kind of a power requirement, you can make a profile of power consumption like this. This is a power consumption profile. At, some, at this point, uh, you need a 30 watt in total. At this point, you need 40 watt. And at this point, you need a 60 watt because uh, you send the signal to the ground. So the communication uh, system is active here, and then you need a lot of power here, and so on. This kind of the power will be required. And so, the important thing is the total say, accumulation of this power requirement. You should be matched with this totally generating power. Okay, like this. So the total area of this red circle, red area, should be matched with this total blue area. Okay, accumulation. So this is a power budget for the satellite case. This kind of the matching between the power generation and the power consumption should be made. And uh, by using this power consumption profile, you can obtain battery storage profile. Okay, so this is a, a battery a consumption. At this point, 33% of the battery is beta. That means the 67 uh, uh, storage of the battery is uh, reside exist here at this point. 100 percent is a full full battery charge. And at this point, 67 battery is charged, but the 37 is vacant. And it, okay, so and during this uh, this time, okay, power generation is larger than power consumption, and so the battery will be charged like this. And at this point, okay, at this point also the power generation is larger than the power consumption and also it's equals to right? But at this point, this power consumption is larger than the power generation, so it goes up. Okay? Uh, the power of the battery uh, say, uh, usage is up here. And also here, uh, the power generation is larger than here. And in the eclipse space, okay, there is no power generation, so the battery is equally right? And so, uh, finally, Final, it goes here and comes back here and cycle, cycle. So this kind of the battery charge and the recharge cycle is also very important design. And you know, uh, usually the battery depth of discharge, it is called the DOD, is something like 30 percent. Okay, because uh, of the prevention of the battery uh, fatigue, we need to uh, make this DOD about 30 percent. Okay, so this kind of thing is also very important uh, our budgeting uh, say, analysis uh, for the satellite. Okay, so the satellite is very, very complicated because as I said before, uh, there is power generation and power consumption. But for the cancer case, there is no power generation. 
maybe you don't put it by any solar cell. Effect. So there is no power generation. So you only have to calculate how much power uh, will be required for the total cycle. Okay, something like this. Okay, so the horizontal axis shows the time. And it, this is a, a servo component. For example, the CPU. Okay, this is a zero power required, zero power. And at the time of the switch on, it required, for example, 0.51. Mm -hmm. And uh, from this point, at the final uh, point, it should uh, consume 0 0.51, okay? And this, you can write this kind of schematics. And for the GPS, at some point, for example, release from the rocket will uh, trigger the start of the GPS. And at this point, GPS will start. And for example, four or five watts will be required for the GPS. And as to the motor, it goes on, on, and on like this. It starts at the, uh, the release from the rocket. And it, after several seconds, it stops, and then once again, after the landing, it started like this, and you can like this kind of thing. And also the TX transmitter uh, to the ground, then it triggers here. And while it is descending, uh, it, uh, it sends some uh, signal to the ground. And this is a receiver system, and also some sensors. And you can like this kind of the schematics for each of the component. And then you can summarize all the required energy for this one mission. And then you can select what kind of battery you need. Okay? You don't have to calculate the power generation, but you should calculate this kind of the totally required power. Okay? And then you can select very efficient, sufficient uh, battery in order to uh, provide power uh, to this mission. Okay, so this is the power budget for the cancer. Okay, so you should do that. And uh, don't forget to do sequence tests in real situation. Okay, just before before the uh, final field test, you should do all these test sequence. Okay, sequence test and using really uh, power consumption right? And finally, you should check whether your design battery can survive at the end of this mission. So this is very important. Okay, and the example we are doing this. this one. Okay, uh, and the subsystem design and fabrication. So, uh, this goes without saying, okay? Uh, system analysis, as I said before, power, weight, budget, uh, power, uh, weight, budget. Weight, weight budgeting is also very important. You can summarize all the required components total weight. And maybe the total weight has some limitation, right? Maybe the total weight uh, has some limitation because uh, it will be launched by the rocket. So you should um, make reduce the weight if it excess the limitation. Okay? So you can do such kind of power and weight budget. And as I said before, the development process, DBM, EM, FM, and the design review and the project management will also be required for you. And maybe the project management will be taught to you in the third lecture of the CLT. Maybe not today, maybe uh, several days ago. Uh, after. Okay? And the, uh, so uh, please share the project management. And you can learn a certain type of the project management for the satellite development, even in the cancer. And also, assembly, integration, and test. This uh, called AIMT in short is also uh, important uh, for execution learning. Okay? Assembly, integration, they go with the same, also with the same. So making your subsystem, and then you can combine all the subsystems into the one sort of system and test. This is called AIMT. Okay? So you can learn how to make this AIMT in the kind of case. And also, you should learn how to do field tests. Especially, the cancer is very different from a real satellite. You can use a rocket, small rocket, or a balloon for the cancer experiment. So you should learn in this book how to do field tests. And also, you can learn how to do the ground operation, completely down and you can make some, um, say, uh, ground 
application software on the console and so on. Okay, in this way, uh, the even if the cancer is different from the satellite, you can learn a lot which is common, which has some common in the satellite. So you can learn many things in the cancer. Okay, so uh, please consider. Uh, Okay, so let me show. So this is the power budget. Okay? And this is the field of test. Maybe there are uh, two ways. Okay, so one is uh, like this, uh, rocket launch, and that will be helping the machine. And also you will do this kind of the balloon test here, maybe here, uh, before uh, in the final test, before the final test, you will do this kind of the balloon test. And so please absorb how to do the rocket launch test and how to do the balloon test using uh, making the most of this opportunity. Because you will do, you should do that in your home country in future. Okay? Okay. And you are maybe you will be the only person who know how to do this. Okay, so please learn as much as possible uh, okay, in general. And uh, finally uh, I'd like to uh, give you uh, some of the important uh, say, uh, comments as to the various levels of the cancer development. Cancer development. There are many levels of the cancer development. So you should discriminate this level and you should find out what is the, more, what is the best level, what is the optimal uh, level uh, for you to say, uh, teach your student. Okay? There are several levels. First level is Maybe the cancer has a kit. You, in the kit, you can get all the components. And you all, also, all, only you have to do this to make a solver for the test. So this is the kit. And assemble kit with fixed mission. Of course, the mission is fixed. And it, you will do some ground test and launch and burn experiment. Okay? Kit assembly and ground test and launch burn experiment. This is a simple way. To uh, do cancer. And some option uh, for this uh, is the case. That is, uh, you, add, you can add some original mission with new components. So the most of the part is the kit. But you can add, for example, you can add a deeper sensor, or you can add some actuator. Then uh, you can do some new mission, original mission. So this is the modification of this first part. And the second part, there is no key. Okay. So you can create mission, you should create mission, obtain or buy subsystem components. You can find uh, where to buy such kind of subsystem component. And AI and the team, assembly, integration, and test, and launch by experiment. So this is advanced type of the cancer experiment. And there are two options. The first option is design, fabricate some components only. And design fabricate all the components. So this is the most difficult. So you should okay. In in the second case, so you can buy components. So you don't have to make any component. The component itself is only the purchase. Okay? But in the two one, you can design and fabricate some components. Okay? And in two and two, so you can you should design and fabricate all the components. So this kind of the three options will be possible in the second time. And if, uh, as I said before, you should find adequate level considering you and your team's expertise. Okay? Find adequate level considering you and your team's expertise. For example, you are not, uh, you are a novice, you, not, you don't know very well about, uh, say, uh, cancer system. And also your student doesn't know anything about cancer. So, then the very good starting point is something like number one. So number one, one one could be the very adequate level. Okay? So uh, please find adequate level considering you and your uh, team's expert. And this shows uh, some table uh, in which level you can <laughs> get which expertise. Mission creation, active design, system analysis, Subsystem design, project management, and AI and D. And small y means that uh, you can get the uh, expertise to some extent. And large y means that you can get full okay, say expertise used, uh, in, in the sequence. Okay? 
a small y and large y. And I think uh, maybe the best way is something like this. The first best way is one one. Mostly, you can use your kit to develop the cancer. Most part is developed by the kit. And if you have time, you can put something, only the one component or something, by your own original idea, and do additional mission. Okay, so this is I think a very comprehensive first uh, say, first level how you say uh, sequence one on one, and in this sequence you can obtain the expertise about the mission creation, architecture design, and system analysis to some extent, and project management also to some extent because the kit is already was defined. But uh, A and T you can almost pull the expertise you can obtain experiences. Okay. So one and one, one or one is a very good combination. And another one is uh, here, two or one. Okay? So uh, you can buy the component, but some component you can build by yourself. Okay? Some component you can build by yourself. So this is uh, another very important combination. And I think in this uh, CLTP maybe uh, look like, right, right? One, 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 or one, or one. Oh, okay, yes. So this is very, very good uh, say, uh, training material. Okay. okay? So uh, when you come back to your home country and you start teaching uh, your cancer technology to the student, please consider this. Okay. And stepping up from the initial uh, to the higher level is very important. Start from very low level and gradually stepping up. So this is a very, very important technology. OK, <laughs> finally, uh, okay, I'd like to, uh, to say, uh, give you some information about the cancer team. And it, maybe if you uh, to say, uh, collect many students, and you start, when you start a cancer, you will do some team of the students. So you will divide the students into several groups. And it, uh, ask them to uh, say do a certain part of the cancer development. And there is two categories, no, two uh, axes of the, this kind of team. The one axis is, of course, uh, based on the subsystems. Uh, subsystems. For example, like this uh, cancer subsystems, command and data handling, software, power system, and charge and dis discharge system. These are very similar areas. So these three parts will be, how we say, uh, managed by the same student. Okay, so one team. This should be managed by one team. And communication system and ground station. This is also another very important subsystem. And this is very similar. So this is can be categorized into the one group. And the sensors, actuators, and missions are also very similar. And so these three will be say, categorized as one group. And so maybe you will divide the student team into three groups. And also, uh, sometimes you need a structure and accessories group, accessories like a parachute and so on. Okay? So maybe three or four, this kind of uh, technological uh, group will be sufficient. So you should divide the student team three or four different groups like this. So this is one type of the group. And the another consideration is uh, more administration, admi administrative roles. So based on administrative roles, you should assign some tasks to the student. The most important one is the project management. So this is the leader of the project. And also, you have sub manager Okay, project manager and sub project manager. These two are very important. And the one guy, one, one student should do budget management. Okay. So, because uh, you should manage the cost, you should manage the cost, total cost. And budget, budget management is very important. <coughs> and the third one is the part, component, search, and purchase. If the someone wants to have a certain type of that, I need uh, this uh, register, I need this LED. Then this person 
should search for from the internet or going some part shop to find out their budgets. So this is another method. The fourth one is the documentation and the data control. Okay? During the concert or even the satellite development, documentation is very important. So maybe you, the group, a whole the group, you do a some with a website, such kind of thing, uh, wiki or something like that. And such kind of the information control is very important. And some uh, guy should, some, some person should do such kind of the information officer, something like an information officer. Okay? Uh, he should do and the, the final one is the outer relationships and promotion. So this is very another important. We hope because if you want to do some experiment outside of your university or company, you should hire some area, and you should have some. You should get some permission from the government or local community. Okay, so this person should do something. Even in Japan, if we launch the capsule, for example, the cancer. Sorry. Rocket or the balloon uh, until it's a very high altitude, we need to get permission from the local government. Okay? So that kind of thing should be done by this person. And also the promotion is very important. Please promote your concert activities to many areas, many persons, government, and also the company. Okay? Maybe, or well, I hope that, that com some company will give you some money. It may happen. So that kind of the promotion is also very, very important. Okay? And also, uh, maybe you are a newspaper or some local TV will say, make an interview for you and do some say, art, uh, art articles in the newspaper. So, so that is also very important. You should say, present your activity to many people. Then you can get support from many people. So that kind of promotion is very, very important. Please do so. Okay, so uh, in this way, so you should assign your student in two axes. One is a subsystem like this, and this kind of administrative role. And the person should do the both. For example, a person will do a CMDH uh, okay, software uh, coding, and also he should do the project management. So the same person will do those two things. One is a subsystem design development, and one is a administrative role. Okay, in this way. Please make a uh, team for this year. Okay, so uh, this and uh, my second lecture. I'm sorry, long, that takes a long time, but uh, uh, let me conclude uh, my uh, lecture. Okay, thank you very much. So. Okay, I can stay maybe 10 minutes more, so you have some questions. Uh, uh, don't hesitate to ask me. <laughs> yeah, please. In the same event, the headsets, you go to the other and the ball in the air, yes. and you make this. And then the main components were successful, and how the components were successful. Not very few. Ah, OK, OK. OK, so hmm, that's a very good question. For example, uh, the CPU. Okay, uh, CPU is the most sus uh, the subject to the radiation. And if I check the many CPU, there I think uh, maybe two out of five, maybe forty percent of the CPU can be used in space. Okay, that means that they are very strong against the radiation. And especially the 8-bit processor, the 16-bit processor is very strong. But more high-level processor is not so good. And so uh, if you want to use uh, the commercial of the shell parts in space, then you can use not the, how do you say, up-to-date processor, but the some conventional processor will be OK. PIC is something like that. That was 8-bit processor. And it is very strong. Maybe average, I think the average is 40% can be used. This is also for other sensors? Other sensors is more. CPU is 40%. Maybe the other sensors, maybe 78% can be used. You can use. Only the radiation is most important. For example, you know that the 
for the part to be used in the car is also very strong against the vibration of the temperature. All these are different in the radiation. Okay? So the, most of the car parts can be used except for the radiation. Without breaking. Yeah. <laughs> you are successful? Uh, our test. Your test is successful. Dr. Field, yes. Why not test? I don't think for the next time. Ah. Means all. Eh? It's all. Because I'm to. To have that. This is a shop test? Shop test. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much.